our supplies today. I'm gonna need some brushes. All of these are round, but feel free if you have angled brushes or square brushes or anything else, you can go ahead and use that. I'm just using these because it's what I have. And it's what I typically use. I have a six by eight piece of paper. That's not the size that you absolutely have to use. I just tend to use something rectangular because um, your phone is a rectangular format. However, whatever size you make your artwork in on actual paper, we can change that when we get into editing the image. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I probably wouldn't go any smaller than five by seven. Um, if you want to do 16 by 20 or super large, go for it, but you really don't need to. This is totally fine. And this is 140 pound watercolor paper. I like this because it doesn't buckle as much as the thinner paper. Um, and then I've got some paints. These are a mix of Windsor and Newton and a couple other brands, but they're all in tubes. And I squeeze the tubes out into these little pans and let them dry. I just prefer using my paint that way. Plus this is nice and portable. I can shut it and take it on the go. And then I've got a little bit of clean water in here. I promise you it's clean. I just have a lot of paint scum all over my cup. And I have some uh, paper towels. So that's it for our supplies today. All right, so we're gonna start with the floral. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through painting a couple simple flowers and then some leaves and then we put it all together. Promise you it'll be easy. And then I'm gonna go through this one with you. You can use whatever colors you want. So for watercolor, what I do is I rinse my brush out in the water just so that it's nice and wet. Then I tap it off on the edge of my cup so that I don't have a whole lot of water on the brush. It's nice and wet. Hopefully you can see that. But if I were to hold it like that, it's not going to just drip off the edge of my brush. So got that. And then what I'm going to do is tap into the color that I want. And I'm going to go for pink. And then I'm going to take that paint that I just got on my brush. And I know this is the same color over here, so I'm going into it. But I'm just going to smush it around. And this really works the paint into your bristles. If you decide you want more water, you can take a tiny little bit up and mix it even more. Do you see how that got a little bit looser and more watery on there? And how to know how much water to use, you can always take a piece of scratch paper and test it. And uh, if you like that color, great. If you want it lighter, you can tap back in your water, smush it around. See how much lighter that is? So it just depends on what color you want, how strong you want your color. So. I like mine fairly pigmented so that you could see what I'm doing, but when I'm painting it on my own, I tend to start with much lighter and then I work my way up to darker. So you can see right here, I started with really light and I got a little bit darker and then a little bit darker as I layered it up. So for my first flower shape, it's gonna be this simple little five petaled flower. And I just draw a petal shape with my brush like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want to be more precise, you can take the tip of your brush and draw it. And you can either come up to a tip like that or you could round it off as long as it looks like a petal. And then you can fill it in if you want to. So I went over here. I'm going to put a third one over here. Like so. And I'm basically just spacing them around an imaginary circle in the middle there. 
do one here and maybe I'll draw this one with my pen with the tip of my brush like a pencil like so and then fill it in it's whatever you feel more comfortable with right and then I'm going to bring this one over here and this one got a little bit funky shaped, but I kind of like that so I'm going to leave well enough alone there and then I'm going to let that dry I'm going to do one more for you If I were to draw this one, just draw a petal shape to begin with, like so, and then fill it in. Now, if you go to fill in your petal shape and this line is too dry, that means you didn't start off with enough water. So don't be afraid to add water because it'll evaporate or you could use a heat gun or a hairdryer to speed it up. I'm going to draw another one here. Fill it in. And then this one, I'm just going to kind of smush my brush down and drag it in a petal shape. So I'm just pushing my brush into the paper and dragging the brush backwards or forwards. Depends on the way you're looking at it. Maybe I'll do it the other way around here from the inside out. Like so. You don't want a perfect flower. You just want something to look floral, like floral-esque, okay? And you can imagine if those were small and like clustered on a branch, they almost look like cherry blossoms. And you could put little dots inside to be cherry blossoms if you want. Speaking of dots, if you want to put little dots inside, you can use the, where's my camera? <laughs> you can use the very tip of your brush or if you have a smaller brush, you can use that. And so this is plenty wet. This paint, if I were to pick up a color and touch, accidentally touch any of this, the color would rush out and mix with it. So if you don't want your centers to mix, I don't mind if they do, but if you don't want your centers to mix, I'm trying to pick up some orange here for my center. Then you want to carefully Oops, there we go. Put little blobs of pollen looking things like so in the middle. So you can put a little center on your flower. And you can make those centers anything that you want. I'm going to give you a minute to paint another flower. And then we'll move on to a different flower. And then I'll show you how to add leaves to it. And you can make your middle purple or blue or metallic if you have metallic paint. I just thought the orange was nice. Maybe I'll put a tiny little yellow blob in the middle there too. That kind of looks cute. All right. So I'm going to move on. And I'm going to do a flower that, whoops, almost knocked my light over. <laughs> um, it's going to look kind of like a, a rose or maybe even a camellia. I'm going to use a little bit brighter pink on that one to differentiate it. Okay. So for this one, you want to just do some C shapes on your paper. We're going to interlock them. Like so. Okay. 
Now we're going to get a little crazy and do something a little different here. When you have those shapes on there, I'm going to take the tip of my brush and start swirling it all together. Chris, I just received that link. What is that exactly? Oh, that second one that I sent, sorry for sending it afterwards, that one is how they can follow the step-by-step -step instructions to actually put the art onto their phone. On well. their phone. Okay. So talk, check yeah, I'll, talk, I'll, I'll explain it a little more as well to what they can expect from that link. Okay. So we're just going to swirl that until it looks kind of rose-like. And then what you want to do is do some more C shapes, but you're connecting it all. Now, remember, we just want this to look rose-esque. So this isn't the typical way that I paint a rose. And if you've been to my other classes before, you'll see that. You just want it to kind of look like a rose. And then when it dries, we'll go in with a second layer, which will help it a little bit more. So I'm going to do that again because I know it can look confusing. And I promise you when you put it all together, it makes so much more sense than when you just have these single flowers out here. All right, so you're going to put a C shape like that. And you're going to paint another C shape like that. So they're interlocking. And then you want to put one on the end and one on the other end, like so. And then we're going to start just lightly with the tip of your brush. You don't want to press down like that. You just want to use a light touch, tip of your brush. And you just want to swirl. You can overlap some things. And you want to leave some white space, but if there's too much white space, go ahead and put another swirl on there to break it up a little bit. And then you want to add some C shapes around the edge. This is almost going to look like you stamped, like you cut some celery and you stamped with it. Like that. This one's not dry yet for my second shape. But you can see that it kind of looks like a rosette. And you can go ahead and put centers on it when it's dry, or you can just leave it. But I'll show you what it looks like with a second layer, which will make it make more sense. Okay, so that one's dry enough. Grab a little more paint. So what I'm doing is grabbing a little more paint and mixing it into my existing blob over here. And if anybody wants to know, this color is called Opera Rose by Windsor & Newton. And the darker pink that I used before is Permanent Rose by Windsor & Newton. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this one is kind of darken up some areas with C shapes. So I'm gonna draw a C over here and maybe one over here. And there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting them. I'm just making sure that they're separate so it's not gonna run together over there. Put one over here. Maybe we'll make a big one over here. And that's just to give the flower a little more definition. Maybe I'll extend this one a little bit. Maybe one here. And we're definitely not going for photorealistic here. You want somebody to be able to look at this and see that it's a flower. Not necessarily be able to identify what flower it is. There you go. 
Like your brain could run with that and say, oh, it's a rose. Oh, it's a ranunculus. Oh, it's just some random flower. And flowers kind of look strange without some context. So without some um, leaves, at least I think it looks a little strange without it. So I'm gonna mix up some green. I have sap green in my palette, which is kind of bright on its own. So I might mix a tiny little bit of black into it. Maybe a little bit of yellow. There we go. So I get kind of an olive -y green. And I'm gonna show you how to make an easy leaf and then I'll show you how it works around the flowers. So you want to take the tip of your brush. I'm going to do this up higher so you can see. You want to take the tip of your brush. And my brush is sort of at a 45 degree angle to my page. I'm going to put the tip of my brush down. And I'm going to push down while I move my brush backwards. And then I'm going to release that pressure so that only the tip of the brush is left on the page and lift up. I'm going to do that again. Tip of the brush. Push down as you drag backwards. And then you come back up till just the tip of the brush is left on there and then pick up. If you want a nice point, definitely just wait till the very tip of your brush is on the paper before you pick it up. And I'm only going to show this two more times because I know a lot of you have done this before but it's very relaxing to paint a leaf. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna mix a little bit more green. Okay, so right next to my flower is where I like to put leaves. So in that little crook between those two petals, I'm gonna put one leaf over here and one leaf over here. And what I like to do when I paint my final painting, I like to vary the colors of the flowers a little, and I like to vary the colors of my leaves. And to vary the color of your leaves, you can add blue, you can add green, you can add yellow, black, navy blue, um, and your green will change color and I like to use some lighter toned leaves and some darker toned leaves so that it all looks a little bit different. Another really easy leaf you can make is point to the tip of your brush to where your stem would be. So we're going to pretend our stem is coming out like this and you just stamp your brush. And then you go you switch your brush over to the other side. And then you can take your tiny brush or your thicker brush if it has a nice tip on it. This brush does not have a nice tip on it. So I'm switching to the thinner brush and then I'm just gonna draw a line for the stem and connect those. If you have trouble visualizing a line, go ahead and draw your line first. Like that. And then you could use that stamp technique like so does anybody have any questions so far see how much nicer that flower looks that you have no, that looks beautiful chris no questions so far i think everybody's busy painting everyone's busy painting all right so i'll just do a couple more leaves and then we'll go ahead and paint a full floral And I tend to do my leaves in pairs, but honestly, you can do as many as you want. And I'll put a third one in the middle, like so. 
And maybe I'll just do two stamped leaves over here like that. And I'll show you one more thing that you can do. We're going to ignore the fact that I just smeared a whole bunch of green paint there. One more thing you can do, I'm going to go back to this flower over here, is mix up some more of that color you use, and we'll go ahead and intensify it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken up. Got some fuzz in my brush. I'm going to darken up the base of some of these flowers like that. I'll show you a couple different ways you can do it. You can just do two little stamps, just like those stamped leaves you just did. One there and one oops, there like that. You can go two thirds of the way down the petal, follow the shape And you can give it another layer of petals so it looks like it's fluffy, like so. You can give it a vein using the same color, using a thinner brush, like just come down the middle, like so. Or you could leave it alone, like that. So you get all those different looks. And you can imagine if you vary this throughout your whole painting, you're gonna get so many different looking flowers. I'm gonna pop that guy there. And I am just going to quickly paint through a floral and see what we come up with. So, and take your time with this. If you have a much larger paper, it's going to take longer. So, I'm going to mix up some sort of coral by mixing some orange that I already had on my palette with some of that upper rose. Now you're gonna wanna rinse your brush between colors. So do as I say and not as I do, cause I kind of sometimes just make my palette turn into an entire wreck, but try to rinse your brush between going into colors. It'll just keep your paints nice and clean. All right, so I'm gonna go with scribbly flower first. And those two accidentally touched. I'm not worried about it. And it's kind of funny to hear people try to identify your flowers because you're not particularly aiming for a particular for a, an exact name of your flower. It's going to be rose esque, but. It could also be, you know, a camellia or a ranunculus. So it's kind of fun to have people guessing. I think there's too much white space on this one, so I'm going to try to cover some of it by scribbling around again. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of space, and I'm going to jump into painting one of those blossoms whatever they are. So I got some paint on the end here. Okay, so we're just So when you're done painting your flowers or whatever you end up painting, if you paint the abstract instead, whenever you're done painting it and you're happy with it, you can take a photograph of it with your phone or whatever you have, and you can use the editing app on your phone 
to crop it, make sure like if you take a photograph and you know, this edge is in it or some of these things are in it, you wanna crop that out so all you get is the image of your artwork. Um, Chris, someone is asking, what are the dimensions again of your framed square of the floral? This one? The one under here? Oh, Probably. I don't even know. So my paper is five and a half by eight and a half. So I would probably say five by seven, well, four by seven, maybe. Is, is that important, Chris? It's not. As long as you paint somewhat of a rectangle, because you will lose some of your edges. Um, and that's totally fine. When we put it into Canva or into your phone um, editing app, you'll be able to crop it out correctly. We will do another. Oh, I went in with the same pink. Yeah, you really don't have to worry too much about what size you make it because Canva is going to, we're gonna use, so as I say Canva, I'll explain what that is. So you can use your phone's editing app to crop your image to get rid of all the excess. Because a lot of times I'll take a photo, let's say for instance, I'm taking a photo of this. I'll take a photo of it, but you're seeing all of this stuff in the background. So I'll just use the regular crop, crop setting on my phone to get rid of everything that's not the painting. Then what I'll do, there is a website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. The links are, Lorraine put the link in the chat below to a page that I created for you guys that has full instructions and a link to Canva. Canva has a free version and a paid version. You can absolutely do this with the free version. No need to get the paid version. Um, so what you do is you go into Canva and it's super easy. If you can send an email, you can do Canva. It's not as complicated as Photoshop or anything like that. Um, so you open a Canva document. You do have to sign up for an account. Just sign up with your email. Um, or if you have Facebook, some I think there's an option to sign up with your Facebook login as well. Um, and then you open a new document and I go through all of that in the link. And when you open your new document, the document type that you're going to choose is phone wallpaper. And that has the size um, already programmed into it. So it'll create it the right size. And then what you do is upload your artwork, which there's instructions for all of that too. And then what you wanna do when you upload your artwork, you click on it so that it it opens on the document and then you can drag it to to resize it and to fill up your space and then at that point you can use it as is or you can add text you can put a calendar on there whatever you want to do it's a lot of fun you'll probably get carried away in canva you can add stickers on there you can add all sorts of fun stuff I think you can even turn it into like a video, but I don't think you can use a video as a wallpaper. You can create all sorts of fun um, documents. You can create PDFs, you can create basically anything you can think of, invitations, all sorts of graphics. And you can do most of it for free. Okay, that's what we've got so far. So I'm gonna put another flower over here or maybe I'll stick one here first. Um, I think I'm gonna do one like this, but with this color, just so we bring this color around a little bit. And I'm gonna let these two uh, flowers kind of crash into each other which always gives a fun effect. So like one color is going to 
sort of run into the other, like you can see is happening right there. That can terrify you a little bit, but seriously, don't, don't let it intimidate you. And you'll notice something else that's going to happen here. These petals are going to fall off the edge of the page. Like you're not even seeing where that ends. At all, which is fine. I like to push it and go all the way out to the edge of my paper. And then maybe I'll do another one of these. I don't know, what do you guys think we should call this flower? Like scribble rose, scribble flower? Does anybody have a better idea? And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna add some greenery to this, but I'm not gonna fill it in and get too completely carried away. We'll do one more quick flower. Maybe we'll do, no, maybe we'll do this color over here. I'm just gonna do a simple. And if anybody has any questions about the instructions, um, to actually turn it into a phone background, go ahead and email me and I'll walk you through it. Or Lorraine also put a link in there to my Facebook group. Um, and it's a private group, so I do have to approve, approve it when you request to join. But that's also a good place to ask questions and share your artwork. So we can see what you created. And Lorraine and I love to see what you make. So share your artwork with us. So we can see what you come up with. Okay. And so when I start adding greenery, I just look for open spaces. So can go right there. That green is a little severe. It's a little dark, so I'm going to add a little water to lighten it up. Maybe I'll add some of whatever color was on my palette already. This is why I don't ever clean my palette, because I end up using paints that are dried on there. So I have two questions. One sure. is, can you do a lavender type of flower? Oh, yeah. And, um, Two, can you demo using Canva? I can't share my screen to show you the Canva demo. Um, but I put the instructions as a step-by-step. -step. Um, so it should be pretty straightforward to use. But I'm serious. If you have any questions at all and you think it does not sound very intuitive, just say, hey, Chris, I tried to figure this out. Can you walk me through it? And I'll be happy to do that. Chris, give me your contact information, all the contact information you'd like to share, and type it right in here now. Awesome. Let me do that.
All right, Lorraine, I sent you my email and my Instagram, and they have the student group info already. Thank you so, so much, Chris. You're welcome. We they have everyone. Okay, so, and I will demo the lavender-esque flower in a second, but I'm just basically showing you how to start building up your floral and putting in your greenery and I'm going to change the color of that green a little bit. I like to vary it. I'll just use whatever I have on my palette here, which is a lot brighter. And I just continue filling in and sometimes I'll add little tiny flowers or this stamp technique. I will use it with color if I need to bridge some space. Like that. And I just go around and I fill in and I fill in and make sure you step back from it and look at it and see where the holes kind of stand out to you that you want to fill in with some more shapes. Um, and then I will go in and decide, okay, this flower's kind of bland. I need to put some texture on here. So maybe I'll just scribble some color in the middle like so. Just dab on some color. Doesn't have to be well thought out. Or you go back to one of these techniques here. Or maybe I just want the whole flower to be darker. So I'll just color over everything that I've painted before, just with another layer of paint to darken it up. So, and then you put your middles on your flowers. And this is not the end, but you can imagine you can fill in and fill in and fill in and it gets really pretty. Now for your phone background, you may not always want to use your whole image. You might just like this tiny bit here or this tiny bit here. And you can do certainly just pick out what you like. You don't have to take the entire image and do it that way. When you get into Canva, you can do basically anything in there and you'll realize that when you play around a little bit, don't be too intimidated by it. There's a lot of menu options on the left side and there are a lot of menu options on the top and you'll be able to change the color of your text, the size of your text, um, pick different font, uh, different font options. Um, you can even put filters on your images. You can do a lot of different stuff in there. If anybody's familiar with Photoshop, you can do a lot less than in Photoshop, but you can also do a lot. And I think with the paid version, you can do even more, but the non-paid version, you have a ton of cool options. So if you just keep going with this and fill it in, eventually it's going to look something like that. This one still has a lot of white space, but I wanted it that way. But if you don't want any white space at all, go for it. Just go ham and start filling in everything. I'm going to show the lavender type flower. Oh, those colors are making me so happy. Okay, so for lavender, it's thin stalks, thin green stalks with purple. So you can do a couple different things. You can do your stock before or you can do your stock after. So here I'm doing my stock and I'm leaving room for my flowers. Just going to deepen this up a little bit. Let's 
Okay, I mixed up some purple by mixing pink and blue together. You can use red and blue. And then lavender, I like to do my lavender kind of scribbly because they grow in like these little clusters. So you can just scribble. I'll hold it up and do the next one. I'm gonna scribble over here. Scribble over there. Ooh, that got a little thick. I like it though. So maybe I'll make some thicker scribbles. So kind of like that. And then you can invent some thinner leaves. Same exact method as before, except I'm using a thinner brush and I'm dragging it for a lot further before I pick up the tip of that. And there's your lavender. I don't believe I've ever demoed a lavender before. So thanks to whoever asked that question. And now that you know how to do some lavender, you can stick some lavender sprigs in between your, your bouquet. When you take a photograph of your artwork to create a phone background, you wanna make sure you take a really nice, clear photograph. If you're on an iPhone, try to use that HDR setting, um, which you'll see when you open your camera app and you look towards the top. Android, I don't know um, what setting you can use, but the Android just takes beautiful photos. Um, I don't have one, so I couldn't tell you about the setting to use. Um, and you want to make sure your lighting is very good. So when I take photographs of my artwork, I tend to put it in front of my sliding glass doors um, out on my deck. Um, just inside of those doors, usually the light's really good, but you can um, experiment in your house. I have some uh, light boxes here, soft boxes. Um, that works really well too, but you can um, you can take a picture of the same painting in a couple different places in your house and see where the lighting is best for photographing art. Sometimes it might just be on the sidewalk outside. All right, are you guys ready for me to demo the abstract painting? This one's a lot of fun and this one's freeing and you can use a lot of different um, shaped brushes if you have them. So you can just grab and you can use whatever colors make you happy. So for this one, I'm going to use my brush sideways to begin. And my goal is to fill this piece of paper. It's not to do half of the paper or stress out about it. I'm just going to use my paintbrush to make a mark on the paper and then I'll respond to it from there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just making a mark. There was no rhyme or reason. I think the bottom of that is cut off. So, so I just went like this and I made a mark. That's often the most intimidating thing, figuring out where to put the first bit of paint on your paper. If you just swipe at it with your brush, you've already made that decision. You've already done that. So you don't need to worry about it. Um, maybe I'll do aqua next. And maybe I'll do a squiggle. Chris, can you put that lavender one up one more second or maybe where your water is or something? How about that? It's sideways, but yeah, that works. Here, let's. It works, yeah. Maybe just leave it there for a couple minutes. Perfect, great, beautiful. There we go. So pretty. Okay, there you go. So you want to squiggle, or you can draw a straight line. It's up to you. I can turn it this way. I can turn it sideways. I'm turning it sideways just 
for the space so that you can see everything. And I think I'm going to pick that hot pink color because I can't not paint with that. And I think I'm going to use my paintbrush as a stamp. And I think I'm going to go along this arc here. And I'm just going to stamp. So all you're doing is making marks with your brush. So you're making little shapes with your brush. So maybe I'll take my thinner brush next. And maybe I'll go into the orange. Maybe I'll go into the lighter orange. And maybe I'm going to lay it on the paper and drag the brush across. Like that. And then you just keep going into different colors that you like and filling up your space. So I can look at this and say, okay, that's a nice space for me to fill or the space between here or maybe the space between here. So I'm going to go fill this space and maybe I'm just going to draw lines with my brush to fill this space. And you can imagine if you sit down and put some music on, you can really get carried away doing this. It makes for a really fun phone background. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill in that space. Now I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I just know that I'm having fun. Let's do some yellow. And maybe I just want to do some yellow dots. No rhyme or reason. Just dotting my brush. And you guys will have to let me know in the chat. Which one of the two exercises you preferred today? Florals or abstract? That would be really interesting to hear. We haven't done much abstract. I've not at all. So I know that a lot of people were expecting just the floral today, but I like to do this for foam background. So I thought that I would throw this in too. Okay, I, so now I'm I just gonna- that. Yeah, it's really different and fun. It is fun. You can really get lost in it and you can yeah. do what you want. It's very freeing. And you can mix it with the flowers or oh, absolutely. abstract just by itself here. or yeah. Totally. Um, someone's asking if you could put the floral drawing in front for a few minutes. So maybe where that purple one is there for a minute. And then uh, someone else is asking if we're going to continue the in-person library classes. Uh, the quick answer is we don't know. Um, you know, it, it, day by day, things are changing. We're waiting to see. We would, of course, go by what the Loudoun County guidelines are and the um, state guidelines. So as they start to allow uh, programs, but there's also other considerations for the library to make sure that we have the staff and um, in place and everybody's feeling comfortable um, and safe. So we're processing everything as it happens and uh, we'd certainly like to have in-person classes again, but right now we don't have anything uh, planned, but definitely in consideration. And now I'm just drawing some little dashes with my brush. Like that. And you just start filling your space with whatever you can think of, you know, just add 
colors and shapes and things that make you happy. And I apologize if this is all you're going to do this weekend because it can get really, really fun to just sit down and zone out and do this. And then I think I'm going to continue maybe like a rainbow shape with just the green here. Like that. And sometimes when I get so in the zone when I'm painting, it's hard to talk. Ha! Huh, kind of reminds me of a watermelon there with the pink and the green. Go back to the orange. You have such a relaxing voice, Chris. I love your paint <laughs> glasses. Thank you. Your instruction is really fantastic, too. Thank you. So I'm just following the curve. And you see how thick of a line I'm getting from this thin brush? Instead of holding it like this, where I'd get a really thin line, I'm holding it sideways. And dragging it across. This is a really great way to see what shapes you can get out of your paintbrushes. You don't need a whole lot. And I guarantee you when you're out and about, you're going to be looking for patterns and shapes out in the wild so that you could translate them to your next painting. And then maybe because I can never not do leaves, maybe I'm just going to put some leaves on the inside here. And then I want to bring some of this pink over here. I'm going to flip it again. This is also a fun exercise if you're hanging out with your friends. Uh, if you're hanging out in person with your friends at some point. And you want to pass this back and forth and everybody gets a chance. Or you can do it with your family at home too. Everybody gets a chance to pick a color and put something on there. One of my friends, we split up a canvas and we each put something on the canvas and she moved far away and now she has that canvas that we all made as, as a little memento in her house. So that's also fun to do. Draw some random circles. And you can also look around for things to inspire yourself. Like, let's see. Um, I've got the spirals on this book. So maybe I could, whoops, totally dumped my brush in that paint too much. There we go. So I've got some spirals here. Maybe I can 
copy those spirals over here like that. Okay, I'll just connect these. Like so. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to come up with. So please share it with us. You can email it to Lorraine or email it to me. Someone mentioned that this is also a great way to practice different brush strokes. That's yep. very true. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, is that beautiful. Figure out what your brushes can do. You can get a lot of different looks from one brush, like how I held this thin brush sideways here. Now I'm making sort of like curved shapes with it. And then here I just drew a line with it. I'm just going to follow these and it's kind of kind of look like some mermaid scales, maybe. Everybody's into mermaids. And you just keep going and fill it in and fill it in and fill it in and have so much fun. I mean, you can even do this on a much larger scale and create a giant um, canvas for your house or a gift. And you can even go over something like what color do I have that will go over that nicely? Maybe this aqua. Uh, maybe I'll put some crisscrosses or some X's all over it and make that into a pattern. Like that. I wish the chat would let you guys hold it up so I can see what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I hate that. We can't do that. I just can't think of any way. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to think if I made, I guess if I, if somebody really wants to share their artwork, I guess I can make them a panelist really quick and then they would have a little screen and they could just hold up their art. So if anybody wants to give that a try, let me know. Ooh. And another thing, I can go over those leaves and I can outline it a different color if I wanted to, like so. That makes it kind of fun, gives it a different dimension. I mean, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. 
Akshaya, did you want to ask Chris something? I've unmuted your microphone. Um, yeah. So earlier you said for the floral one and the mm -hmm. like the first one, you said yeah. that they're um like overlapping colors. Um, I didn't really quite get how you did that. You mean when I talked about that there? Yeah. Okay, so what I did with that is, I'm going to try to keep that on screen so you can see. It started out very light, like more like this. Whoa. <laughs> and then I layered that color on it. That It's the same color, it's just a darker mix of paint. So I put more paint in the water to get it like that. So that's how that got layered up. So it was the light paint, and then I put slightly darker paint on it, and then over here I put even darker paint. And the way it got darker was that I added more um, of the paint into like the puddles that we mix on here. I just picked up more paint and added it in there. Does that help? Yeah. Awesome. So that's how we got like this. It's the same color, we just put more of the paint in the paint puddle to get this. Except I didn't show you how to do this shaped flower. So it's a same concept, di different flower shape. So I have this space here. I could fill it with a texture, like how I filled the lines in there, or I can just follow the shape. Oh, that color is too similar. Let's pick up a different color. I can just follow the shape of that empty space. And I can just fill it in as a solid if I wanted to. And when that dries, if I want to put a texture over it, I can, or I can just leave it like that. You can see I did a ton of different shapes and overlays. Like this was all green, and then I put a little bit of pink on top, and it turned purple. There's some really fun stuff. I'm going to do some squiggly lines here. And then I can break up some of these squiggly lines. So I'm going to use bright pink. And I'm doing the same squiggly lines, except I'm making it dashed lines instead of straight lines or continuous lines.
like so. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, Chris. Everyone is just really having fun painting, I think. <laughs> you can really let your imagination go wild with that, can you? You really can. Do you guys want to see me finish this one while we chit chat, or do you want to see me finish the floral one to see how that goes? Which one do you prefer? Please type in the chat floral or abstract to let us know. And we we'll just have to give it a few minutes. Uh, there's one for floral. We'll one, two for floral, three for floral, <laughs> four for floral, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> five for floral. <laughs> I think that's the way we're going to go. <laughs> I had a feeling that that would be it. So this one's pretty easy to finish. You just fill in all that space until all of it's taken up like so. And we're going to go back to the floral. I'll just build it and you guys can ask questions or whatever you want. I'm going to deepen this up in the middle just by stamping. I have... Oh, I don't know how you would get to my YouTube channel because I don't know what it's called. Ha! Huh. Maybe if you type in Chris Hoya Art in, into YouTube, you'll find it. Or um, remind me if you're in my group and I will send you a link. But um, I have two videos, older videos. They're terribly done, but they're viewable. Of myself just painting these florals um, with some music in the background. So I know sometimes that helps people to understand how it comes together two i'm not super youtube savvy so they're oh warn you they're pretty terrible pretty pretty terrible they're kind of some are blurry some are dark but you can still see them and just darkening up the middles. I really like this color that I had mixed here, so I'm going to just stamp with my brush and use up this paint like so. Really like it. I'm just going to stamp. See, so there are those stamp leaves, except they're in a floral color, so your eye is going to read them as a floral. And maybe this one, I will follow the shape of the edge and fill it in. When you layer up your watercolor, you just add a little bit of visual interest. Because you want your paintings to be interesting to look at. I'm just putting some C shapes with that same color that I had below. No rhyme or reason as to where. Kind of globbing it on there. And when it comes together at the end, it all works. Again, I like that color, so I'm going to stamp it in a couple places. Maybe here. And some of it, I'm actually letting it touch the green. We're not too worried about it. Maybe I should quit wasting this and put a few more C shapes on here. Oops, that wasn't quite a C, but it's all good. There we go. And I think it's time to start putting some more leaves. Someone's Except. suggesting that we do feathers and fruit for another program. I love painting both of those. So that's you do? I, think we, I think we had a fruit one down, um, but 
feathers. Oh, yeah. Could, would you do those together? No, probably separate. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to imagine that. <laughs> the fruit does take a little while. So maybe not together, but. Uh, oh, let's do those. For, what, do you know when your next two programs are with us offhand? I think, I don't know the actual date, but I think the next one is next month. Let me check real quick. I don't I know. Thought one in this book right here. Oh, yeah. well, you were going to do the wreath. Would you rather do feathers or fruit? Um, we can do, yeah, let's do feathers. Let's do. How do you like these fruit? Should we maybe that, paint some citrus? April 16th is the next one. Okay. So we can do feathers for that one and then we can do fruit after. If you have something else on the schedule. Good suggestion, whoever suggested that. Yeah, the next one then is May 21st. So maybe we can do fruit for that one. May 21st, yes. Okay, I'm going to put that in the. What Does anybody have any idea of what fruit they would like to learn? Because we can do any. We can do either serious fruit, like the oranges that I just showed you guys, or we can do more fun summer fruit. You guys can decide. And so, I'm just adding so far, I've had for suggestions pears, mm -hmm. grapefruit, oh, yeah. lemon, peaches yeah. or pears, watermelon, lemons, and peaches. Ooh. Oh. Grapes. Oh my gosh. I could just see these with your beautiful colors. Strawberries, watermelons, exclamation points. Well, it sounds like we're going to have to have a few fruit classes. With I know. Fruits. Can we do lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a drink would be fun to do too. Maybe It'd be cool to do, do like a glass of lemonade and then with some yeah. lemons around it or something. Yeah. We can Pineapple. Do the yep. The fruit and the drink. How about that? So does everybody want to do two classes of fruit or do you want to do a feathers and then a fruit? You know, I bet the feather would be good like later in the year. Feathers then fruit. Someone said. All right. Well, let's do then feathers then fruit. Sounds good. So I'm just varying the shades of green that I'm putting in. Maybe want some more yellowy green. That always brightens it up nicely when you start putting little pups of yellow in. And I'm just rant at this point when I start to fill in spots, I don't think too hard about it. I just kind of go in and stamp it with the goal of just filling space. Because if you stop to think too much, it's going to take you forever to fill it. I let them overlap, all sorts of fun stuff. See how that yellowy green just brightened it up a lot? And I think I'm going to put in some dark middles, and some of the flowers with some indigo dark blue. First, it doesn't look like much, but then when you start putting in the middles and the leaves, it gives it more context and it gets more interesting. And sometimes it can take 
forever. It can take hours of painting for your painting to look like anything. So don't give up, don't get frustrated. Just keep filling in and filling in and filling in. And definitely vary those greens by mixing yellow into them or blue into them. And also, if you run out of, or not if you run out, if you feel like it, you can pop in some of your flower colors, just the stamped looking leaves. Or you can use the tip of your brush to kind of just stipple. A few dots and it would kind of look like there's some sprigs of a, uh, different flower like peeking up in between your bouquet. You can even scan these in and use them to print. You can order from Costco or somewhere um, cards. And you can use these as just your everyday thank you cards. Just get them blank. So you can use them as thank you cards or thinking of you cards or just a hello. I love sending random cards in the middle of the year when there's not like an occasion to send a card. And that's how you build your floral. I think sometimes some blue leaves can be fun too. So I might add a little bit of blue here and there. Turquoise is fun too. Little unexpected pops of color. You can even fully outline some of your flowers if you want to, just for fun. I'm mixing up a darker version of this pink. Just going to kind of go around. Not super perfectly, but that can be fun too. Gosh, thank you guys for spending your Friday evening with us painting. That was really nice of you to do. It's such a fun th way to spend a Friday afternoon, isn't it? It really is. I know I had fun. And thanks for all the fun class suggestions. Keep suggesting that I'm open to anything. As long as I'm able to teach it to you, I'm happy to share that with you.
And don't forget to save that link so that you can follow the instructions to turn it into a phone background. That one's really bright in person. It's kind of technicolor. Does anybody have any more questions for me about either one? Or if you have, if you have a question about um, the supplies or anything? Uh, someone's asking um, if the feathers and fruit projects will be on the calendar. And yes, they will. Uh, as soon as Chris creates them, I'll put them in the calendar. <laughs> we just gave her notice today <laughs> that she's got to do a new image, but. Okay, so when is the feather class? That one is. So that's on... April 16th. Okay. And then May 21st will be the fruit one. Okay. All right. And what is the Facebook group? Do you want to talk? I'll give, I'll put the address again for the Facebook group in here, but do you want to talk a little bit about that, Chris, again? Sure. I just want to add before I do that, the feather that I paint, I always cut them out after, and I use them for bookmarks. So oh, that's even more fun. So I'll show you guys how to do that, too. Um, but the Facebook group that Lorraine's putting the link for, it's just my private Facebook group that's only accessible to my students that request to be in there. So if you've ever taken any one of my workshops or my classes, you can join. And um, we have some free classes sometimes. Um, I try to do a demo at least once a month. And you can post your artwork and get feedback. It's a really friendly, nice community. Everybody's really supportive. Um, because it's filled with all of you guys. And I have the address for your, let me see, what do I have? The, um, I, I have your email, I have your Instagram, and then I have the chrisloyal.com painted wallpaper um, for the instructions, which is the Facebook, what is your Facebook address again? That's the first one that I emailed to you. So I think it's okay. Good. The one with the, um, the, the directions. Mouse. Yep. Yeah. Got it. The chrisloyal.com slash painted wallpaper. No, it's the facebook.com slash groups slash okay. I don't student lounge. That was the first email I sent. Oh, there's an email. Okay, let me check yeah, that. that. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. Sorry everybody. I will send it right now. Hold okay. on. Got it. All righty, here you go. And I have to approve you when you um, request access to that. So I will do those later this evening. And I would love for you to share what you did today so that we could see and I could send it to Lorraine or you can email to Lorraine or myself or both of us. We get so excited when you guys submit and show submit your artwork that you did during the program. It always blows us away what you guys come up with. Because everybody takes the same exact instruction and goes in so many different directions. It's always so fun to see. I think that's the best part. You can really make it individual and make it your own. Geez, I could keep going on this forever. I think 
I want to make this my summer phone background, so I might hang on to it till later. I think this looks a little bit like a surfboard over here accidentally, and it kind of looks like waves. That's another fun thing to do, sort of just do these, and then you guys can take turns looking at your work and picking out images. Kind of like when you look at clouds and you, you think that clouds look like something. Chris, I just want you to know that I'm receiving so many compliments for this class. I mean, someone just said this was amazing. Thank you. I love to paint along with Chris. This was Aww. so much fun. Can't wait to the next class. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. That's so sweet. I can't wait for the next one either, too, because now I'm excited to do feathers. I haven't painted feathers in a while, but... I was on such a feather kick for a while there. I'm really excited to start again. How many people do we have on today, Lorraine? Let me see. Hold on one second. Just reading comments here. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, someone's asking if we have an Instagram. The library does have an Instagram account. And we've had some people just log off. So let me see what we had total. Today is April 2nd, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with 40 people on with us today. That's awesome. Yeah. I know a lot of people are actually away for spring break too, so. Yeah, for sure. I think everybody's away this week. I know. One good thing to note is where you just put paint down so you don't do what I did, which is put my finger in it. 
because you can really work you know all over your page at the same time What's the next watercolor class you guys have coming up, Lorraine? Um, let's see. It's next Friday. Your August 2nd. Okay, so next Friday we have a class again at 4 o'clock. We're going to paint um, a still life in watercolor, some heads of garlic. Really pretty. I just, I'm looking at the image right now and it would be so beautiful framed and put in a little frame in your kitchen. And then April 16th, we're going to paint feathers. And then April 23rd, a really sweet image of a mother and child giraffe. Oh, fun. Yeah. Nothing scheduled for April 30th. I don't know. Maybe we should have you come April 30th, Chris, and do fruit. Oh, we can switch the fruit to the 30th, or we can even just add another. Or just do another fruit. Yeah, there are so many different. There's so many fruits. For We're different kinds. <laughs> yeah. Someone said they still love the February heart. Oh, thank um, you. And look forward to doing this project offline. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thanks for coming. Yeah. That's so funny. That's the second person today to reference the February heart. Uh, Somebody sent me her work today. I did a fun spring egg project, so I think I'll have to. Oh, that's that a fun one. idea. I'll have to do that one with the library next spring. It was so much fun. Speckled eggs is pastel colored speckled eggs. And I did record that one. So if you guys want to take a peek at it, you still can. We're still in that sort of early spring mindset or winter if today um is any indication <laughs> it's really cold today So, um, Jen, you're at, which video are you asking for? I'm not sure. Oh, did you mean the eggs, Jen? Maybe she's, yes, the eggs. Do that you... is recorded in my student group. So if you join the Facebook. Uh, yeah, you have access to that. Um, and any others that I did before, because I, I, I do them live so they get recorded on there. Without me having to remember to hit record.
are we on till six today? Um, yeah, but I mean, if you're done, we can, you know, cut in the next five minutes. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just thought it was 530, but I'm fine. With oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 530 is right. You're right. Four to 530 it was an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. You're just getting lost in your work there, Chris. We all are. No worries. I'm sitting here just memorized watching you. It's like watching a cooking show, you know, you're kind of living vicariously. It's just so beautiful. But yeah, I mean, we've, uh, some people have, um, I'd say we've lost the half the class at 530 because people, okay. you know, schedule that much time. Yeah. So if you want to draw it to conclusion now, that's fine. Yeah, totally. So you guys just keep finishing, you know, keep filling in all of your empty space as much as you want to. There's nothing that says you absolutely have to cover every inch of the page. Um, and then go to the website and run through the instructions. Um, give yourself some time and be patient if you've not used Canva before. And, um, and have fun with the possibilities on there. Um, and if you have any questions and you're confused, uh, take down my email or you can use um, my website. You can contact me through my website too. Yeah, let me give everybody those. Um... Okay, so here is the Facebook contact. And let me get you in case they have a question about... I can give you the um, your email address again and Instagram, right? Got that up yeah. here. And then the directions for turning this into. And I also put a couple um, of wallpaper, phone wallpapers on there. If you don't yeah. have make your own, you can just use mine. And there's the wallpaper. And then um, let me get the Instagram and your email. Okay. And here's the Instagram and email address. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for having me. Is the Canva or the Canva instructions on the Instagram account? I think you said it was on the. Um, it's on the website. On it's the, on the okay. website. Yep. I created that page just for you guys, so you won't find it anywhere but through the link. Um, so if you lose the link for any reason, just email me and I will resend it to you. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys paint. I can't wait to see. That's my favorite part to see what you guys made. Favorite, favorite part to see that you guys came away with a fun new skill. Anybody have any questions before we go? Uh, no, not right now. So right. thank you all so much for attending today. We appreciate it. Love to have a group of you and talk to you through this program. And we love to see your artwork too. So please feel free to share it with me or with Chris. And thank you guys so much. We'll see you on April 16th for Feathers. Take care, guys. Lorraine, I'll